This is an unscripted first thoughts of my first watch of Eve of the Daleks. It, it's, it's an okay idea. Um, well, it, it's a good idea, actually. I think that the idea of the Doctor uh, being stuck in a time loop constantly is a very, very good idea. Um, and I feel like it's one that could be used very well. Uh, it had a lot of potential for comedy. Uh, if any of you watched the, I think it was the 1999 uh, Children in Need Doctor Who uh, joke thing they did, where they did a um, comedy sketch called The Curse of Fatal Death, in which Rowan Atkinson, famous for playing Mr. Bean, and uh, Johnny English plays the Doctor. Um, then he dies, regenerates into... Um, Another famous British comedian dies, regenerates into another one, dies, regenerates into another one, dies, regenerates into a woman. Uh, and the whole joke is the Doctor keeps dying and coming like in quick success in quick succession. So they die, then they come back, then they meet they do something is instantly they die again and regenerate and change again. Um, they could have done that, where it could have been each time the Doctor gets exterminated, they regenerate into a new Doctor, but like have some like famous personality, like have Keanu Reeves, then Henry Cavill, then Ben Affleck, then uh, anyone play the Doctor for like a single scene before they get exterminated, regenerate, and it killed again, and then the time loop starts. That would be a funny idea, be a good idea. Um, the idea of the time loop and the Daleks is also one I find quite good, where. Um, it sort of connects into the Flux. So the basic plot is the TARDIS after Flux is filled with goo, cobwebs, and multiple doors that lead to nowhere. And the Doctor resets it using this mode which breaks time. It uh, causes a huge outburst of energy. The Daleks recognise this energy and send assassins, Dalek assassins, to kill the Doctor because they destroyed the Dalek war fleet in the Flux, which was an angle of storyline. And um, every time that they die, the time loop repeats, but it repeats a minute later. So it's eight minutes until New Year's, then seven minutes until New Year's, then six minutes. Uh, that's how long each loop lasts. And um, basically to defeat the Daleks, what they have to do is they have to blow up the building they're in, which is elf storage which is shelf but the s fell off and i found that a little funny uh it was described as a rom-com and the characters of i forgot their names it's the um two who aren't the doctor's companions they're there and they're the comedy and well they're all they're the comedy and also the rom the romantic couple uh, unlike Dan, who his role has gone from being the comedic relief character to being the like a more serious character. Like he says like a funny line or two at the start, but then he just loses it, and he's back to being, or well, not back to being. He is changed into serious character, and um, he basically tells the audience, uh, well, and Yaz, you you want to fuck the doctor, and then. They talk to the dog and says, they like like you. And the dog's like, I don't know what you mean. It's like, yes, you do. You just don't want to admit it. Basically saying, you want to fuck yes. And um, it's a good concept. I feel like it definitely could have been done better, though. Um, the whole thing with the time split was uh, caused by the TARDIS. The da multiple Daleks coming in and all to assassinate the Doctor. I feel like the Doctor being stuck in a time loop constantly could be done well, sort of, um, yeah, it definitely could, but this was, I think it was done okay. There were some of the writing decisions I didn't like, like the Daleks, they, what they say sometimes doesn't feel like what a Dalek would say. And like at one point, the girl, uh, the, the, the girl who's not the companion, I forgot her name, but I just remembered the guy's name. His name is Nick. Uh, he, Basically, the elevator comes down. It's like, oh, is that you, Nick? I am not Nick. And uh, they also say, Daleks are not sorry. Daleks are persistent. Daleks are patient. Daleks 
change Dalek. They say stuff that I don't think a Dalek would be necessarily inclined to say, but it's okay. Um, next, there's the whole thing with the romance between the Doctor and Yaz. I'm not a fan of it, simply because Yaz is barely a character. If you disagree with me on this, that's fine, but I just want to ask you, what is her main personality trait? Why does she travel with the Doctor? How does her past, and what she's experienced in it, translate to her experiences with the Doctor? Um, she travels with the Doctor because she likes them. Why? Why do they like them? When's it ever set up that she likes them for a reason? Do they do anything to help her? Uh, if you go back and watch at the start, she just sort of instantly likes them for no reason. They don't give her a personality reason or anything. Uh, she's a policewoman. That does it. That's like never brought up except for once. I think it's brought up. Never again. She's not really a character, like most Chibnall characters. More so, they're planks of wood with uh, faces painted on them. Um, I'm, I'm. I also. I don't like the idea of the Doctor having romance romances with the companions. I didn't like it in um, the movie. Um, I didn't like it with the Tenth Doctor and Rose. Um, with River Song, I also sort of didn't like it, but it was a bit more acceptable through the whole. Um, she's not really a companion, and they just constantly meet at different times because they're both time travelers, and she's also has a longer lifespan than a regular human because Amy and Rory conceived them whilst they were in the time vortex, which gave them. Um, both an extended lifespan and a few regenerations, and it, 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 it's a bit complicated. But I do like her, um, and I feel like her romance with the Doctor is a bit mm, to me, but I, and I still don't like the idea of it, but I think it's done well. But with Yaz and the 13th Doctor, it's never really set up that they're ever romantically inclined right up until this point. Um, other things that also aren't set up, the Doctor says stuff like, my past is finally catching up with me, I don't want you to get hurt, and um, Yaz goes like, and at another point Yaz would say, um, oh, when are you going to tell me everything? Oh, don't worry, I, I will tell you everything at some point, don't worry. But it's like, oh, you Doctor, you never tell me things. It's like, when? What, like, it's never set up that the Doctor doesn't tell us stuff, it's just told to us. Um, it, she never... Is it, we're never told something like the Doctor's learned something and we've learned it too and then she withholds it from Yaz like we don't know what the Doctor could be keeping from her it's like oh my past is finally catching up with me what happened? it's like never set up that anything in the past that could have made the Daleks come and try to assassinate her would be brought up like this like um the, the Daleks say the flux you destroyed our fleet with the flux so we're here to kill you for that but the doctor says oh my past is finally catching up with me and there's like, like oh what past it's like, oh nothing i didn't see anything i don't remember saying that everyone says lots of stuff and it's like i say like too much don't i and it's basically sort of um we're never told like we're given a reason why the daleks are there and then the doctors like think it's it's another reason so the audience is given like here are two different reasons why the daleks are here which one is it? We'll let, we won't tell you. We don't. We don't do that here. Um, and it's a bit yeesh to me. And um, sorry. And we're never shown that the Doctor learns anything. Like, if there was a sequence where we had the Doctor like um sitting down, I will like over the TARDIS console, and we hear voices like um. She's remembering stuff, and it's like things like people saying stuff like "Doctor, you did this," or "You killed them, Doctor." Or some, you know, it's like they're dead because of what you did, or something like that. It was like multiple voices saying that, and then Yaz says, like, "Oh, you just left for this place. You said you were going alone. Oh, what did you do there? No, nothing, nothing, nothing exciting." You know, then we'd know, but we're never told or shown really that the Doctor has got an information she is specifically keeping from Yaz. Uh, not at least in any way that would we would care. 
is the same with Flux, where it's like um, the Doctor has apparently learned something. We don't know what she's learned. Um, that is being kept from Yaz. So it's hard to care. And the romance is a little forced, and Bradley... No, not Bradley Walsh, sorry. John Bishop, who plays Dan, I really like him. I really hope that... He, he, he has said that he is leaving after these next two specials, but I really want him to stay on because I feel like he's really good in the role. I feel like... Um, it's like the same with Bradley Walsh, though. It's hard to tell where the character begins and the celebrity TV personality comedian ends. Like, Bradley Walsh was on the chase, and he had a ability to make any of the scripts that he was given any of the uh, material he was given by Chibnall or the rest actually good through his like emotion behind the eyes and like the way he said it he was good at that but um and the same with John Bishop he can do that as well um because he's a comedian he always every character in Chibnall underreacts it's annoying when you have a character that underreacts that's because it's like entire thing just blew up oh no it's gone it's like uh yaz destroys her sister's console like new ps5 console she bought just to impress a guy with her gaming skills to like learn a game and destroys it oh do you want me to be single forever it's like every character underreacts to everything but because john bishop does it and he's a comedian it makes more sense with this character where it's like oh here's your house by the way yeah it was miniaturized how am i supposed to live in that and it's like funny because it's it's done well with his character because of the guy playing it. But he's pushed out of that comedy. But what I'm really... I shouldn't be. I'm not going to be. Why, why am I? I'm excited for the next special. Because it's on a Chinese pirate ship. Um, like I, I recommend you go into like Wikipedia and look this up. There was... I forgot who she was. But I heard this story about a Chinese pirate um, who took over like hundreds of ships, had a whole fleet and terrorised the Chinese shores for like decades uh, and she was like a real badass. I don't know if this is about the same lady though but it's a pirate story set on a Chinese pirate vessel and I w I'm all up for this. I'm all up for historical episodes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the first Doctor had what, what the fans call true historicals these were episodes that were purely focused on history, where it was like the Doctor and co interacting with history and accidentally they caused the Great Fire of Rome. Um, but then in the third Doctor's era, during his final season, the Time Warrior happened. Uh, it's a very good episode because not only is it Sarah Jane Smith's first episode, as well as the introduction of the Sontarans, it's also the first case of a pseudo-historical. A pseudo-historical is an episode that takes place in the past, but there's aliens there. An example of this would be the fires of Pompeii in season four. Doctor goes to Pompeii on the day it's supposed to burn, you know, volcano day, and what happens is there's aliens there. Um, a true historical would have just been the Doctor and companion there, no aliens. And I was, I'm up for true historicals, I want to see more true historicals. Um, apparently some, like Marco Polo, which is a ten part epic in the style of sort of Indiana Jones with the first Doctor. Sadly all footage of the episode is lost, there are still telly snaps and audio. I pray every night that someday it will be made into an animation. If they did a true historical I would be quite happy with that. We don't have a true historical though. In the trailer, it's revealed that uh, it's the lost treasure of... I forgot the name of the ship. And the Doctor and co are there. They go onto the ship, they find the people, and it's under attack by sea devils. For those of you who don't know, um, the Silurians were the second episode in the third Doctor's era, Doctor Who and the Silurians, where the Doctor fights Silurians. Duh. Um, which are, they're reptiles from ancient times who used to rule Earth, but now don't. Yeah, so Chibnall wrote um, an 11th Doctor story which brought the Silurians back. 
They were also brought back in the fifth Doctor story, Fury from the Deep. But they're in the second season of the second Doctor, or third Doctor, sorry, there was an episode titled The Sea Devils, in which the cousins of the Silurians, who were also reptiles but lived in the ocean, attacked. These were brought back again for Fury from the Deep, but not for the Silurian Departer. So this episode is bringing them back. They're sort of a fan favorite classic Who monster, but I'm not too sure because they. I like the design of the Sea Devils, but in this, they. I I just saw the trailer and I sort of forget, but it looked a bit uncanny, like a practical model, and then they put CGI over the practical model, and it doesn't look that good. It looks a bit mm, like a bit jank to me. Um. But hopefully what they do is they keep the voices from the uh, classic series and they don't try and change them because those voices were really cool. I'll put an example up of This is our planet. My people ruled the earth when man was only an age. Your people went into hibernation and abandoned earth to its fate. Our astronomers predicted that a great catastrophe catastrophe that you predicted never happened. And the apes that you left behind on the surface to die became man. You know our history. Yes. Yes, I've encountered your people before. Thing is, they're probably going to have the sea devils be more human-like and actually like, open their mouths and they blinked in the trailer. Which the practical models before didn't. Um, so they're bringing the sea devils back. I should be excited for it, but it's Chris Channel, so it's so it's going to be probably lackluster at this point. But that's my first thoughts. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, socials in the description. Uh, see you guys in the next episode. Love yous. Love yous.